G'day beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Gideon, we're going to look at his stats, his scaling, and my build guide for him. If you do want to find this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, drop me a like down below, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, or just to say hi, subscribe for more content. But with that said, let's get started. Okay, so taking a look at his stats, guys, as you can see, being a caster starts at 500 health, ends up at 1442. Health regen is pretty crappy, starts at 1.2 and ends up at 4.1, standard for casters. Uh, mana starts at 280 and ends up at 1232, which is a standard for casters. Same with the mana regen, 1.3 ends up at 5.1. But weirdly enough, he is one of two casters uh, that start with 9.2 basic attack armor, get 1.15 per level, and end up at 25.3 instead of 22. I'm not sure why that is, but that is a thing. And 30.5 ability armor as per usual. Okay, moving on to his basic attack, which is called Portal Blast. It does 53 damage as a standard at level one. It gains 1.6 damage per level. It's got a cooldown of 1.2 seconds, and its power scaling is 0.3 being a caster. This is pretty standard. They're not built around their uh, basic attacks. So no crit, no attack speed, none of that sort of stuff. You will get enough damage uh, on his basic attacks. Off of the power we're gonna use for his abilities. Just don't, uh, don't ever build him uh, to be attacking a lot with his basic attack. No, like I said, no attack speed, no crit chance. One other thing to take note is he has a very weird wind up. It can be a little bit hard to get used to. It's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it is still pretty hard to get used to. Next up we have Cosmic Rift. Gideon opens a Cosmic Rift over the battlefield, dropping a meteor at the target location. Starts off doing 100 damage, ends up at 280. Costs 100 mana and ends up costing 145 at max level. And the cast range is 2000 units. Power scaling is 1.25, so for every 100 power, you'll get 125 extra damage on this, and the cooldown is 8 seconds. It's a very good ability. Uh, long range poke uh, is amazing with this. You end up doing quite a lot of damage. Uh, it's a great, great ability. Don't ever underestimate it. Uh, Gideon is a pretty disgusting caster, and the Cosmic Rift is one of the main reasons why. Just remember to lead this ability uh, or use Burden to make it easier. Next up, we have Torn Space. Gideon opens a portal at a targeted area, allowing him to quickly teleport. Friendly heroes can follow him through the portal by jumping into it. The mana cost is flat at 55, has a cooldown of 12 seconds flat, and the range starts at 850 and goes to 1000, so maybe consider not up not uh, prioritizing upgrading this because you are just increasing the range but getting to a thousand units is quite good because if you're just inside of uh, basic attack range it will get you out of sticky situations another really good thing about torn space is using it in conjunction with this ultimate but we'll get onto that in a moment okay next we have bird and gideon fires a projectile that tethers him to an enemy hero while tethered the enemy is slowed and takes ability damage over time. The tether breaks early if enemy gets out of range or breaks line of sight. So the ability ability damage over time starts at 21.25, okay, and it ends up at 58.75, and that's uh, four ticks of damage. Okay, the power scaling is 0.9375, so you're going to get 93.75 damage for every hundred that you put on in power. Uh, the cooldown is 10 seconds flat. Starts off at 41 mana and ends up at 50, and the movement speed slow is quite good. It goes from 150 to 300. It is really, really good for uh, starting off an engagement and landing your uh, Cosmic Rift. Uh, and don't actually underestimate how much damage this is actually going to do, because with the build that I use in particular, particular you're actually going to end up doing over 300 damage with this ability. And next up we have Black Hole. Gideon starts channeling and summoning a black hole from his Rift device, which creates a swirling vortex in the radius around him. Enemies within the radius are dragged inward and take ability damage over time. The ability damage on his ultimate starts at 310, uh, 320 and ends up at 700. It costs 125 to 225 mana. The movement speed slow is 210. The initial cast time is 0.5 seconds, so it doesn't start doing damage for half a second. 
it has a 3.125 power scaling, okay, so you're going to get 312.5 damage added to it for every 100 power you have. The cooldown starts at 110 and ends up at 70, and it goes for about 3.5 seconds. Uh, it's a disgusting ability, as you'll see in the background, I may be playing on solo, but it does so much damage. Uh, with this build, you'll end up doing over 1500 damage during that 3.5 seconds. Just make sure that you actually use your teleport to get up in the air over the top of enemies because otherwise you will be uh, left open to being stunned out of it by ground based charges or uh, stuns and whatnot. Uh, you are still vulnerable to getting pulled by Grux or stunned by Narbash, etc. Uh, but this is a disgusting ability, especially when used over the top of a Decca cage. Okay, so here we are at uh, the build portion of the video. Uh, I have deleted most of the cards that are replaced. Okay, so I use the Archmages on, um, on Gideon. Gives you 300% damage versus Structures Dominions. The reason why I take this over uh, the Warlord, which I don't know why I even clicked on that, is that gives you 100% damage for your minions against enemy minions. You're not going to have an issue with the minions. Um, I would rather have my minions do more damage to towers because you can easily clear the minions but your auto attack doesn't really do much so I like to take that so my minions can do more damage to towers. Okay as per usual ward saves lives always have wards so I run a brawler's ward with three minor casts which gives me just an extra 30 uh, mana. Uh, we're not really building mana on this deck we have three Shadow Scrolls for the end game with three major casts. Each one of them gives us six ability pen, taking us to 18 ability pen, which gets through more than half of everyone's natural ability pen. Okay, uh, then I have two Solaris Reactors as nine point cards with two casts and a chrono on both. Uh, so that is my entire build. The only thing that I change is sometimes instead of running a Solaris Reactor, I will run Tainted Magic. Uh, that is if we have a Rampage on the enemy team, is really, really good on Rampage because if he is tower diving uh, and taking aggro, you can actually ult him or hit him with anything you want after you hit Tainted Magic uh, and it'll stop his health regen because he's poisoned. Okay, so that gets rid of that massive health regen and it allows your team to quickly burst him down. Uh, or just in any scenario when he ults, really, uh, it's such a such a good card for uh, taking out um, rampages. So on that, I put two basic chronos and a chrono. But taking that is completely up to you. Uh, if you tend to not even come across rampages, maybe it's a waste having it in there. Uh, but as far as the rest of the build goes, I always take a healer token. I was actually discussing this with my mate Freak the other day. Uh, he likes potions, and I like tokens. Uh, the reason being, if we look at the health potion, uh, you get 6 health regen for 15 seconds, okay? So you get uh, 90 health back. You have 2 charges, so that's 180 health. Whereas uh, this gives you 2.8 health regen. So uh, every 100 seconds you're getting 280 health regen. I know it takes a lot longer, but generally you're staying out for over you know, two minutes. So that's 120 seconds even, which is even more. Uh, that's an extra 56. Okay, so you're, uh, you know, you're, you're getting over 300 health back uh, in the time that you're actually out, whereas you would have used both of these up and still be lacking health. This just keeps healing you. But that, as I said, that is a personal preference. Do what you like. Uh, I like to start with Mutagems as my six point cards. Uh, and I take them with two minor casts and a basic mana. That ends up giving me 60 mana, 0.6 mana regen, and 18 power. Okay, so I take two of them. Same again, two minor casts and a basic mana. All right, and then we're pretty much finished. So what else you take is completely up to you. I often uh, take a Scout's Ward, uh, but they're not too great. So as long as you're building your Brawler's Ward first, you can... Uh, you can steer away from that and just take an extra mana potion. I wouldn't really recommend taking a cast token because, uh, as we've said, they're not really built around doing uh, auto attack damage. It will help your abilities out a bit, but it's not going to be that much. So you might as well go for mana potion. 
and then you have it there just in case you're struggling to get uh, river buffs. So that is my build guide. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you did, drop me a like. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. I really, really appreciate all the support that I'm getting lately. Uh, leave me a comment, say hi. Uh, let me know what you think of the build or if you have any suggestions whatsoever. If you just want to call me a douche, that is totally cool. Uh, subscribe for more Paragon content and other content in general. But as per usual, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I love your face, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.